how to use Brusho watercolour pigment powders. That's what I'm going to teach you in this video. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching me, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find watercolour, mixed media, drawing tips and techniques as well as business, social media and online selling tips for artists. So please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell notification, you'll get notified each time I have a new video for you. So first of all today I'm going to explain what Brusho is and the pros and cons of using it. Then later on I'm going to point the camera downwards and show you four basic Brusho techniques. So Brusho is a watercolour pigment powder and you can use it alongside your regular watercolours. So it comes in little pots like this and it's a powder which I'll show you later. You can use it with watercolours or you can just use it on its own as a watercolour medium. So what are the advantages of using Brusho? Well first of all it's just really good fun. It's incredibly brightly pigmented. It's really easy to get lovely loose watercolour effects with it. You can get some stunning effects that you don't get with standard watercolours. So it's just a really, really enjoyable thing to use and you can get some really loose, unpredictable results with it. So what are the disadvantages of using Brusho? Well, the fact that it is so strongly pigmented means it's really, really hard to control. It gets everywhere. Um, I do day courses on it and I tell people you'll find it next day in your knickers always gets a big laugh, they don't realise that I'm actually telling the truth. The tiniest speck of it, whether it's on your clothes or whether it's on a piece of paper, you might not even know it's there, later on it will activate with water and you'll get a big, um, a big bright splash of brusho on your what you thought was a previously clean sheet of paper. So it can be very messy, it reactivates even when dry, so whereas you might be able to make a watercolour technique and put another layer over it and preserve that underneath technique, with brusho, whatever effects you get with it have to kind of be left alone because as soon as you put another wash over the top, it'll all dissolve. So there's that problem with it too. The other problem is it can just look really, really gaudy and unnatural. Now, these are all problems that can be dealt with, which I'm going to show you later and speak a bit more about those. One other problem I've heard with it is, and this is just a rumour, I hear other professional artists say that it's not very light fast. Now, I can't speak to that because I haven't done any of my own um, tests yet. There is a way of testing if colours are light fast, and I might actually do that in another video and test the light fastness. But of course, if you're using Brusho um, and you're going to get prints made of your painting or you're using them for a greetings card, perhaps that's not as important to you. So um, more on that later, I will be investigating how permanent Brusho is. As I said, the main problems with it are that it's just really hard to control. But I think, you know, the brightness and the unusualness of the effects really make it worth the trouble. So what I'm going to do now is point my camera downwards. I'm going to show you four really basic ways of using Brusho. So we're looking down at my drawing board now and let me show you what the Brusho looks like. So it comes in these little pots and I have to be quite careful. I wouldn't normally do this over my drawing board, obviously. And you're going to prise the lid off and you can see that there's some powder in there. Now rule number one with Brusho is never put a damp brush in. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to use a dry brush to pick up and I've got this old sort of scruffy acrylic one. So a bit of a scruffy brush will actually pick up more of the pigment. That said you need the very very tiniest amount. So for the first technique we're going to apply the Brusho to, um, to damp paper and this is going to give kind of a starburst effect. So let me show you how that's done. So I'm just going to put this colour down first of all. Now you'll notice when I'm using the brusho that um, it's uh, it's kind of multi-pigmented. So in each pot you tend to get um, a colour that actually comes out in lots of different colours. So the black for instance has you know bits of blue in, bits of brown in. There are one or two of the brusho colours that are um, single colours. I think the turquoise for instance just comes out as turquoise with no um, other colours in it but several of them come out sort of multi pigmented and this is one of the reasons people get in trouble with it because they just use too many of them on one piece of paper so if you've got one that's multi-pigmented probably don't need to use that many colours so I'm going to um, apply some water here I will also put links um, in the description if you want to uh, to see some of those uh, you can buy brusho in sets and also in individual pots so I'll, I'll put some links down so you can see those on um, on Amazon they are affiliate links, which means that if you buy anything on Amazon after clicking that link, I get a little bit of money, but um, you don't pay it. So win-win, you can take some money from Amazon and 
chuck it over to me if you were going to buy something anyway. Right, so um, I'll just point out as well another thing that I do um, with my pots is I put a little mark on them. That's just a bit of uh, blue nail varnish. Now the reason I do that is in an art class when you've got, you know, 14 people or whatever and several of them have their own pots of brush, you may find you mix them up with other people's. I probably should have put marks on the lid as well. And that's one way of marking your equipment is to use a bit of um, an unusual colour of nail polish and just pop a bit of that on. Matches my nails, doesn't it? And then that will help you to uh, to see the difference. You'll also see there's a dimple in the lid here. Some people, what they do is they um, they they pierce this with something like one of those pins that you would put on a pin board, um, a drawing pin, and they they pierce that and then they leave that pin in. And then when they want to use the brush, so rather than risking dropping it everywhere, they sprinkle it um, like this onto um, onto their palette, onto their paper. Now I don't do that. I like to keep the lids on mine. But if you are someone that really is always in a mess and always dropping things may be safest for you to use that method of getting your brush out and not risk knocking it all over. If you do actually take the lid off like I do, be sure to put it on the second you finish using it and don't just have it open randomly on the table. So I've got my wet surface there and I'm going to pick up a little bit of brush and then I'm going to tap. Here we go. Look at that. It's beautiful. So this technique is often used for things like flowers and you can use them if you're painting something like fireworks and you see that by knocking it onto the damp paper you get this beautiful starburst effect. So for the next effect we're going to apply initially onto dry paper. So what I'm going to do is just with a piece of kitchen paper I'm just going to clean that uh, little brush off. There's no need to rinse it. Of course if you rinse it it's wet and then you can't put it in another pot. So let's get another colour. So that one was called sandstone. Um, what have we got here? Orange, I don't know, um, that's a bit similar isn't it? It's a bit similar. Okay, ultramarine, that's a really stunning colour so let's put some of that on. So what I'm going to do this time is again I'm going to prise that off very carefully and if you're not making a YouTube video, as you can see some of it's dropped already, if you're not making a YouTube video like me for goodness sake don't open it near your paper. If you're someone that gets in a mess, cover up everything, newspaper, old clothes, the lot. I was born fairly neat and tidy so I'm not going to worry too much. So again, I'm going to pick some up. I'm just going to tap it onto dry paper. And you see you need very little, very little. And what I'm going to do now, because obviously that haven't, hasn't activated. It's just sat on the paper and it would just brush off really. So I'm going to put the lid on my, uh, on my pot first of all so I don't knock it over. And then I'm going to um, just spray it with water. And what you'll get this time, rather than this starburst effect, is you'll get much more of a broken effect, which is equally beautiful. So I've got a little um, water spray here. This is just one of those travel ones you get in, uh, you get in chemists or drug stores. And um, I've labelled it water, and you'll see why in a minute. And there we are. I'm going to spray. So look at that. Really interesting, isn't it? You don't want to overdo it. If you do too much, and my board's on a slight angle here, if you do too much, it'll just run all over the place and uh, and drip down the paper. Now, can you see that some of this has gone over onto this area that I painted previously? So that's what I was saying about brush being hard to control because the tiniest little pigment bit that you can't even see actually um, can activate. So I think I probably overdid it a little bit there. I've got some running here and then I've got other areas which are broken. So you can see the, the amount of water that you spray on depends on the sort of effect that you get. Now the next technique I'm going to use for brush out, and this is a bit hit and miss, is I've got another one of these spray bottles. You see this one's labelled bleach. It's actually about 50% household bleach, literally just the stuff you clean your toilet with. Um, well, I don't because I'm fairly environmentally friendly, but obviously um, sometimes you might have some bleach around. Or you can buy some just for art. It's 50% bleach and 50% water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it on areas I've already painted and it will have some effect. Sometimes it bleaches out to white. Sometimes it doesn't do anything much and sometimes it actually changes the colour. For instance, I know that I was using the Prussian blue one day. When I sprayed it on there, suddenly lots of pink bits appeared. So this is something quite random. It would be quite interesting to see what happens. Sometimes it doesn't have a big effect and it does take a few minutes to develop. So that may need a little bit of time to develop. So what I'm going to do is spray it on this area. i spraying on my hand there that I've already worked into and we'll spray some on the blue as well and see what effect it has there. 
So you can see it is starting to bleach out in areas. It hasn't had such an effect over here. It can be quite subtle. And as I said, it can take time to develop. And we'll do a bit more of that in a minute. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll put another color on. Let's try the Prussian that, uh, that I know has an effect. So take the lid off the Prussian. And here we are. I'm just going to tap some on the paper here. So we'll spray first of all with the water. You can see the Prussian colour coming out there. And then we'll spray it with the bleach. And you should find in a minute that pink starts to develop. And you've got some areas here where it's starting to white out. And also some of these areas here in the orange have gone a bit more brown. So can you see that that has changed the colour of that already? As I said, it takes a while for these bleach effects to develop. So hopefully by the time I finish the video, we should get a bit more development on that. It's all getting a little bit wet. Now, if you're going to use bleach, you have to be very careful that you're in a ventilated area. It's not too much of a problem for me here because there's only me in a very large studio. Um, I particularly don't allow my students to do this in a big class of people unless um, there is access to the outside, then go out into the garden or into the field and spray with bleach because it really can be um, very bad for your lungs. So that's one thing I would say to you is if you have um, issues like asthma, maybe don't do this technique. If not, if you're perfectly healthy, have a go at it, but open the window or do it outside. Even in here, getting quite a lot of bleach in the air. Won't do me any harm on this one off occasion, but long term, it's not something you should be doing regularly. So you can see on the Prussian here, it started to change the colour, whereas it was a dark blue. It's now gone kind of grey with little pink bits. So finally, let's look at uh, working in to a previous layer of brush out. And what I'm going to do here is change up the colours. So I'm going to apply some sort of um, some reds and then I'm going to apply some greens and see if we can get more of a sort of a floral effect going on. So I did actually film this just now with the uh, the sheet of paper I was already working on. I'll show you that at the end where I was working into it. But for some reason the uh, the camera switched itself off. I think the memory was full so I've deleted a few things now. So there we are. So I've got a layer of water there and here I've got some. This colour is olive green and you'll see that when you open them up that looks a uh, bright sort of mustard yellow. The colours that you see in there don't bear any resemblance to what the actual colours are. So what I'm going to do there is put some of the green around the edge. And let's see if we can put some red in the middle. So what have we got here? The, the colours of red, this one's called Brilliant Red, but the colours of red I find, there's about three to four different colours of red that you can get in brush oil and I've seen them on colour charts and they literally all look like the same colour so that's a little bit strange. So I'm going to put some of that red in the middle and I think as well we might actually have, I think we'll put some, uh, we've got some emerald green, I definitely had some emerald green earlier, yep let's put some emerald green around the outside as well. Just a little bit of that because it's a very strong colour. I'm going to spray a bit of water on as well just to activate that a bit more. There we are. So that's quite pretty. But what I can do now is I can use a brush to blend any areas I want together. So remember that if you get a nice area like this where it's looking really pretty, as soon as you take a brush over it, even if it's dry, it's going to just blend to nothing. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take the, um, the brush around the outside here and start working in and see if we can really get some a bit more um a bit more structure to it now look at these aren't they pretty they do look like they could be sort of coral or something like that don't they take those around there don't forget as well that you can use ordinary watercolors you can just dip in and out of your ordinary watercolors i haven't got mine out at the moment but that's something you can do too so we could if we wanted to get the effect of perhaps leaf shapes here 
let's make something a bit more structured here. You see how I've just picked up some of that brush show on my brush there, I can work it into the middle here. So really you can do anything with it and you can make it kind of abstract or semi-abstract or you can, as I said, you can work in and make it look like some kind of floral background or maybe some kind of um, some sky, you know, some kind of aurora borealis or um, maybe some fireworks, something like that. So there's lots of things that you can do with it. You can even just use it to make a really random background that you then sort of work into. But as I said, do remember that uh, that rule that once you go over it, if you see, I'll go over some here, it, um, it actually blends into one block of paint. So once you get this how you want it, you can't then take another layer over it. So that's just something to consider, but it does make a really beautiful background and you can get all sorts of um, flower techniques. See how I've picked up some of the red here and I'm working into where the, uh, the blue and the green is. It's getting a little drier over there. I could actually just make some shapes in that as well. So I'm kind of going for leaf shapes here and leaving some areas so they might look like flowers perhaps. nice shape here that I might want to preserve so maybe I'll go around the edge of that one and I could even take some sort of wiggly lines in around this flower shape here. So you can see by working in with a brush I blend it into um, more of a pure colour and then I can leave those other areas in isolation. So if I pick up the one I did earlier I added a little bit of emerald green to this and then I worked into this one with the brush as well. As I said my camera very nicely um, switched off right at the beginning of filming that but you can see how I just started working in here. I can continue you know, even once it's sort of semi-dry. Still got a bit of red on my brush from the other brush or like I said you can go into your watercolour palette and just pick up some colour. So it's really really versatile and gives you some of these beautiful effects that you wouldn't get with standard watercolours. So of course there's a lot more to brush show than I've been able to show you in this video. I just wanted to show you what it is and how you basically use it. However, I'll have some longer brush show tutorials coming up on this channel. So I'll also be doing things like uh, using it alongside uh, my fine artwork and also making things like um, craft papers and greetings cards because it's really, really fun and useful for those things too. Please do subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see those videos. If you can click the like button, it shows YouTube that my videos are doing okay. Let me know in the comments if you, uh, if you found this tutorial useful and you can watch another one of my videos right now.